welcome to worship. We are so glad that you have joined us again this weekend. It is the second weekend after Easter, and so we continue with our refrain, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. One of the joys while gathering online is being able to see different worship leaders, and so we want to thank the Children's Choir for their participation this week. It would have been the children's musical this weekend, and so we look forward when we're able to gather again to celebrate and to watch them share God's word in that way. We also do it a little bit differently every week with different people participating at different parts of the service. And so we're grateful for our international mission partners who will help us lead worship later in the service. But now we continue in song. recognize me with my new quarantine hair, right? No, you know it's me, Pastor Emily? Oh, well, you probably know because of the sound of my voice. Sometimes though, things in life aren't that obvious. We can be confused or perplexed by what is happening to us, and it can take us a while to understand what God is doing. Even in the Bible, people didn't always recognize the signs that God gave them. After Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples didn't always recognize him either. In today's Bible reading, we hear about two of his disciples who didn't recognize him. They were walking along the road and they were feeling really sad that Jesus had died. And Jesus showed up and he started walking with them. He asked them why they were sad and they told him stories about Jesus. Jesus told them stories about him in the Bible. And all of their walking for seven miles, they did not recognize that it was actually Jesus with them. But finally, when they got to a town called Emmaus, they stopped for dinner because it was nighttime and they invited Jesus to stay with them, to have dinner with them. And Jesus agreed. So they were having dinner. And as they were having dinner, Jesus took bread and he broke it. And suddenly the disciples realized who he was. Their eyes were opened that it was Jesus who was walking with them that whole time. Sometimes things in our lives are disguised as well. And we don't always recognize what is happening. We don't always recognize what God is doing. And then we'll have an aha moment and we'll be filled with joy because God is at work and is with us. We often call those moments blessings in disguise where we don't understand what's happening and then finally realize that God is with us. 
This week, I invite you to look for those blessings in disguise, those aha moments when you realize that God is with you. Let's pray. If you could please repeat after me. Dear God, we know that you are with us. Help us to see blessings in disguise. to know you, and to make Jesus known. Amen. We continue with our gospel reading. Today's gospel reading comes from our Savior's mission partners in Slovakia, Palestine, Mozambique, and Haiti. Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Know that some day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their face downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word, and did before God and all the people. The chief priest and our rulers hand him over to be sentenced to deed, and they crucified him. But we had happened that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all things took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the temple early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that this day had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the temple and found it, it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the world, 
and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Hey church. It's still the season of Easter, which means during this time, we have the Easter proclamation that we say back and forth. Will you join me? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I begin today by sharing words of grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I need to begin by saying thank you to our partners in ministry, our friends and companions in Slovakia, Bright Stars in Bethlehem, which is in Palestine, to our friends in, in Haiti, and also in Mozambique. It's such a great joy that in a time where we are looking at being church together in the midst of social distancing, that we can invite our, our friends to, to join us in sharing the good news. And, and I just give thanks to them for, for sharing with us today the gospel text. With that... There's a lot of things that we're hearing update-wise locally, but we want to invite you to continue to watch for global updates. Our mission partners and friends are doing some amazing things to care for their community. One of my goals for today's sermon is to highlight that relationship between the walk to Emmaus and the places where we see Christ revealed locally and globally. And what I find really important is that in these stories, we are binded together as the body of Christ, as people of the resurrection. But before I do that, I do have a confession. I know that for me, for the best form of weight loss, I need to avoid bread and gluten. I don't know if the same is for you, but that's how it is for me. And yet during these quarantine times, if you see what's trending on Instagram, it's people teaching other people how to make their own fresh sourdough bread at home. Now, I am not as talented as those people on Instagram, nor do I have the patience to make my own yeast, which could sometimes take up to a week. It's just not my thing. But I did learn that I have patience enough to make my own pita chips, which only takes like an hour. So there's plenty of pita chips in my house. Also bread. If you've watched our other worship services, you've met Pastor Wesley. Pastor Wesley loves to eat sandwiches every day for lunch. Peter butter sandwiches, salami sandwiches, which are sandwiched around bread. Now, Pastor Gia, who was in our children's sermon for last week, she's obsessed with Ritz crackers. There's lots of bread in our house right now. So the last few weeks of quarantine, forms of bread have been stable products which provide calories and carbohydrates, but most of all, I think bread is a source of comfort. By the way, shout out to all my bread lovers out there, we're doing just fine. Joke's on us though because they told us that we would lose weight if we stopped going out for dinner all the time and here we are eating out at home, gaining weight over bread. In all seriousness, bread was just as important for Jesus. When Jesus was out in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, do you know what the devil tempted him with? Bread. Jesus used bread as an example in his teachings. When his disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he told them to ask God to give us this day our daily bread. Later, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. There's a story of a time when Jesus and his friends were out in the middle of nowhere teaching to crowds of more than 5,000 people. It came time for supper and everyone was hungry and all that they could find were five loaves of bread and two fish. That's when Jesus goes and takes the bread and asks God to bless it. He breaks the bread into pieces and then tells the disciples to share it with all those people. They ate it until everyone was full, that there were more baskets even left over. So speaking of comfort food, every Sunday when we gather to celebrate the resurrection, to celebrate Easter, we remember the night that Jesus had dinner with his friends at a table where he took a loaf of bread from the center of the table he gave thanks to God for it. He broke it and gave it to them. He said, this bread, it's my body and it's given for you. And then we have the resurrection story that we just heard our companions read from all over the world. 
It was evening on the first day of Easter when Jesus met up with some friends on the way to a town called Emmaus. They didn't recognize him because they weren't expecting to see Jesus. But when they sat down to eat, Jesus took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, he broke it into pieces, and he gave it to them. And it's there that they realized that it was Jesus. By the way, I should share with you a word that I've been intentionally using today. The word companion. Normally we use that as a word for friend, but the word companion literally means the one with whom you break bread. I think there's a lot of powerful things happening in our story today from Emmaus, but the part that I really want us to celebrate is that there is power and transformation that happens when we break bread. In the depths of despair and confusion over everything that the disciples had just witnessed, they were walking on the road, and it's there that the disciples offered hospitality to a stranger who was in their midst. They even invited that stranger to spend the night, and they shared a meal with him. As a pastor, I'm sometimes given strange titles. Uh, I'm technically a pastor who's ordained in word and sacrament. Those are really churchy words to, to mean kind of two things. One thing is that I'm to preach the word, the gospel, the good news of Jesus. So that should be what you hear when you come to church, whether it's online or physically together. The second thing is that we administer the sacraments. In the Lutheran Church, we have two sacraments, baptism and communion. Both of those are things that you can feel. You can feel water and you can feel the bread. So pastors are kind of bread breakers. When you come to church, you will normally hear one of us preach the gospel, and you'll also hear, whether it's Pastor John, Pastor Emily, or myself, saying these important words of the story, when Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, breaks it, and gives it to all people, his friends, his companions. Again, meaning those who we break bread with. It's a part of our calling as pastors to share that word and share that bread. And I need to be honest with you, like Cleopas and his companion, I see Jesus when we break bread together. I see Jesus when we worship together. I see Jesus in the eyes of our faithful gatherings, of people worshiping with us. I see Jesus in the eyes of children who come out with outstretched arms to receive communion. I see Jesus in the eyes of their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents who, who have brought them there. Of course, I see Jesus in a lot of other places as well. Specifically right now, when we cannot break bread together in the same worship space. I see Jesus in the eyes of those who are caring and working and saving lives within our community and all around the world. I see Jesus in the eyes of those who are working in the service industry, who continue to provide items within our lives, delivering them to our homes in a safe manner, so we do not have to go out. I see Jesus in the eyes of teachers who are engaging students and encouraging them and giving them hope when they are learning from home. I see Jesus at work in our local and global mission partners, our friends, our companions. Just because things are closed down right now does not mean that God is not in action in our world. We have many companions who are out there making sure that people are clothed and fed and cared for. One thing that it shows to me is that so much is happening outside of our physical church walls. I see Jesus in the outpouring of care that they have for all people, even strangers. I see Jesus all over the place in our world, in the helpers and in those in need. I see Jesus in the mundane and in the profound. And I see Jesus every time bread is broken. Right there, I think, is our mission and calling that we can hear from the road to Emmaus. That as followers of Jesus, of the resurrection, that our eyes can be opened to realize that Christ can be seen in the eyes of a stranger, of those around you. 
And we have a calling to break bread with those around us where strangers then turn into friends and companions. I love breaking bread, whether it is at my dinner table or when we are together as a worshiping community. I love the power that bread has to bring us together, to bind us together, because that's what bread does. It makes us companions, one with whom we break bread. To people of God, no matter where you are or how you are worshiping during this time, whether you are sitting at a dining room table in Naperville or you were gathered around a couch in Mozambique, we are drawn together as companions. We break bread together, no matter where you are. And I give thanks to God for the ways in which you are caring for those around you by caring for your families, whether it's a phone call or a face-to-face, -face, by continuing to safely serve others, and for those who give abundantly during this time. Do you know what I see? I see Christ in your eyes. I see the risen Christ and the love that you share with this world. So let us continue to break bread together. Let us continue to share our Easter story for all the world to see. Will you join me in our Easter proclamation one more time? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Amen. In this time of desperation, all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation all is dark you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that it conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptation Oh,
join me in prayer. Gracious God, wherever we are, fill us with the confidence that you are with us and never leave us alone. Be with us now. In the midst of this pandemic, give us peace. Be with leaders and elected officials. Give them wisdom. Give them courage. Fill them with your grace. And be with us, especially those who need healing. And as we think of particular people in need, we remember them now by saying their names silently or out loud before you. Be with those who face risk for our sake, especially medical personnel and all those who are serving on the front lines. We pray for police, firefighters, first responders, the military, all who serve. Be with us and guide us, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And I encourage you now to, uh, to share the peace with those you are with at this time as you're participating in this worship service. And also this can be a reminder that, that later, perhaps later today, you take the opportunity to share the peace in a, in a safe way, a phone call or a text or an email with someone maybe that you haven't seen for a while, maybe someone who needs to hear God's peace right now. And following the peace in our worship service is a time where we typically share and receive offerings. And now as we prepare for that, we hear from Terry Thompson, one of our directors of Worship in the Arts. Hello, my name is Terry Thompson, and I am one of the Worship and Arts Directors at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. We recognize that all of us are adapting to changing times with this pandemic. We all grieve the loss of in-person worship, school, and various activities that were important to us. The children's choirs were scheduled to present their musical offering, The Sailor's Bible, this weekend. They have worked hard on the music and hope to present the show when we are gathered together for in-person worship. Our children's choirs, youth, and adult choirs continue to meet on Zoom every week with some music and a lot of fellowship and connection. We are grateful to be blessed with many musicians who have been recording music from different locations to be used in our worship service. We thank our musicians and the congregation for their support of our ministries, including the music ministries. During these times, it's important that we continue to support our mission of knowing Jesus and making Jesus known with the continuation of regular offerings. We are truly a blessed church community and appreciate the many ways that you allow our saviors to continue supporting its mission locally and globally. And now we continue with the service of Holy Communion. If you've not already done so, you're invited to go get some bread and, and juice or wine to join in this time of communion. And we share that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed for you. Please, uh, at this time, share communion with one another. And if you are alone, now is a good time to remember that you are not alone. 
This gift of communion brings Christ to you in a special way and also brings to you the community of faith, the communion of saints in a special way. Even if we are physically apart, this is a time to remember that we are gathered in this special time through this sacrament. And after you return from sharing this time of communion, we receive the blessing the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will.